All right. Welcome in to Softball Talk, long overdue episode. Yes. Coach, it's been a minute. It has. Uh, I think a lot of it has stemmed from Dan the Fan uh, getting busy. I got a little lazy. And then uh, Mercy got on a streak, and I was a little apprehensive. I, I wanted to keep the streak going, and uh, some good things happened over the last few weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to start off with a couple things. Um, congratulations to Maya Merrill, your senior pitcher coach, finally back healthy, a hundred percent. Um, I think, you know, a lot of this early season stuff, you know, you saw injuries that mm -hmm. you had to overcome. Yep. Um, but Maya Merrill, 500 career strikeouts for Mercy Academy. Um, coach, congrats to her. Congrats to you. Her catcher, Peyton Arnold. I mean, there's a lot of people that are involved in this. I know Maya would be the first to thank them all, but uh, congrats to Maya. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, and a lot of that, you know, she pitched a lot of that when she wasn't 100%, yeah. you know, and still, you know, with the injuries that she's gone through to get the 500 Ks is pretty impressive. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a remarkable feat uh, by that incredible young lady, and congratulations to her, um, and I hope it continues. Absolutely. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about, Coach, uh, there's been just, you know, we haven't done the podcast, I've gotten phone calls, I've gotten text. is Coach JB going to be at Mercy Academy next year? Is he moving on? Is he um, – going somewhere and I, i'm putting you on the spot here but uh coach i mean I, I know you'd like to put some of it to bed it's been yeah it's know, uh tired of it yourself getting the the calls and yeah and you feel like also and, and i mean i'm gonna be honest i'm gonna throw this out there i think you know other people are trying to pick uh pick some future jaguars away from you and, yeah. and scare them and things like that and so let's just put it to bed you know uh, right i mean now. And, you know, I, yeah, it gets a little old that every time I walk off the field after a game, I have parents of future Jags mm -hmm. uh, approaching me saying, hey, I, you know, can I talk to you for a minute? You know, we're hearing rumors that you're leaving Mercy. Right. Look, let me assure everybody, JB is not going anywhere. Correct. Period. The end. Okay. I am not leaving Mercy. Uh, I work there full time. Uh, I love my job. Mm -hmm. I love the school. Uh, my athletic director, uh, Angela and Lorraine, both support me 100%. And we got good things going on there. Yeah. And so I think it's safe to say, Coach, I mean, I, I don't know all the personal, your personal details, but I mean, short of uh, something crazy uh, happening and whatever, but. Uh, Happy that you'll be back at Mercy in 2025. Absolutely. Um, yeah. All right. So why are we here? We are we are here for the the tournament. I mean, it is here, Coach, it's and here. we've talked about it. I've you know I tried to give us some good juju and everything, and, and I think Mercy's finally on that path. Right. You've you've had some big gains, you know, and, and we'll get to that. We've got to start. We're going to start with the seventh region. Uh, because, Coach, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's going to be an absolute battle. I mean, they all are, right? Every tournament out there is going to be a, an absolute battle. There's some good teams, especially matching up in the first round. Absolutely. Of the seventh round. Yes. Uh, we're we're going to go through them all. Um, Sacred Heart has Portland Christian. I think Sacred Heart uh, should easily handle Portland. Uh, shout out to them for making the tournament. Uh, but I, but I think they will advance. Yes. The next game you have the Eastern Eagles, who just beat Ballard to win the district tournament, and for beating Ballard, they got to play Mail in the first round. They did, dude, and what a draw! You know, um, th I'm telling you, dude, that is going to be a very good ball game right there. One o'clock tomorrow at Eastern, weather permitting. We're filming this on Sunday of Memorial Day weekend. Um, I did already see, Coach. That the next game, the Ballard Dupont Manual game, was moved to Assumption High School uh, tomorrow night at six o'clock. Oh, okay. So okay. they moved it away from Manual. They're now going to play it at Assumption. But jumping back to the Eastern Mail game, Coach, uh, I think 
um, Mel got him in the early season. I think it was a two to one yeah. or one to two or yeah. something like that, right? Uh, type of ball game. Um, I know Bear, and I and I uh, I've seen him out and about, and I said, man, I think you know your ladies are primed and ready for this. Uh, they just have to, you know, Edie Kretzer came out for them against Ballard, gave them all five of their runs, right? Dude, five RBIs, the kids. Yeah. You know, she smoked the first the first or second inning, smoked one in the gap. Yeah. Uh, so she's hot. She gave them all the runs. Now, shout out to all the girls that got on base for her to get those RBIs. Uh, but, hey, let's see Chitwood. Let's see Gabby Morris. Let's see uh, Robertson. Let's see a few of those other girls get some big knock-knocks, which I know they're capable of. Uh, I think it, you know, maybe Eastern Cruises. The problem, though, is – Mel is an absolute monster at the plate, Coach. Yeah, yeah, they are. a major power hitter. Yeah, they, they got a lot of power there. But look, man, Holly went out there and shut Ballard down. She did. And yeah. Ballard's, Ballard's no slouch. Well, I, mean, I mean, Michaela Milby, a D1 commit to the University, University of, Louisville. of Louisville. Yeah, and, and so, you know, a girl like that, like Milby, I don't think you're going to shut her down no. all the way. But if you can keep her to singles and don't give her anything more than that, that's a win every time at the plate. Coach. Absolutely. So, you know, look, I went out there. I watched, you know, Hallie was on her game. Yeah. She was throwing well. So, I think, you know, that's going to be a dogfight right there. It is. And uh, so, best of luck to both of those teams. Um, and, hey, we'll see because I tell you, it once you get through that game, then that then the winner will play Sacred Heart in the next round. Uh, and, you know, should make it to the regional final. Uh, yes. Uh, Ballard Manual, we just spoke about it, got moved to Assumption High School. Uh, I think Ballard Cruz. I think Ballard to take care of that one myself. And then, yeah. uh, lastly, the hottest team, I think, that's, uh, that's out there right now is the Assumption Rockets, uh, 25 and 11. Uh, Lauren Satterley continues to amaze me every time I see her stats coach. Yeah. Uh, but let's not forget, you know, we've mentioned a lot of the girls, Tia Ice, Camposano. Um, gosh, their left fielder. I'm sorry, I forgot your name. She's committed to Sen Riley Sandifer. Sandifer. Um, they've got hitters, and they are hot. They're hitting the ball. Satterley's playing well. Ava Lou's coming in uh, in relief and, and giving them some some innings when they need it. I think you'll see Assumption, and I think you'll end up seeing the Eastern Eagles in the regional final. That's my pick. Okay. All right. uh, best of luck to all those teams. Um, Mel may slip in. You know, I just – I think with, with Eastern losing the first game, I just – prove me wrong. And, and, and it's not a slight – we're just trying to – I'm just trying to make it a make – a, uh, make a decision, you know. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Coach, let's let's flip a couple pages to the sixth region. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about where Mercy is. We're not going to really get into the Jags too much, but uh, first we'll start with the hottest team in the sixth region right now is the Butler Bears. Their sched their record at fifteen and fifteen, Coach, does not reflect who they are. No. And uh, they've they pitched their their pitcher. Um, help me out with her name. I'm sorry, Alyssa Malone. Yeah. Um, 100% healthy, it sounds like. She's been throwing dimes. Every game that she has pitched in the circle, she has put Butler in the opportunity to win. Absolutely. And yep. uh, I think, you know, coming out of that top, you've also got Faradell, their first time winning a district title against Bullet East, who Mercy knocked off the other night. Uh, um, Holy Cross. I'm sorry. Faradell uh, beat Holy Cross. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I meant Bullet East, who Mercy beat the other night. I'm sorry. I was – Meant some words there, but yeah. Um, so I think you'll see a Butler Bullet East game on Tuesday, yes, down at uh U of L, and I think it's going to be a good game. Uh, I think the thing with Bullet East is, is they have three great pitchers, right? They have three, and you kind of don't know what they're going to do uh, against you, and uh, each one's a little bit different, mm -hmm. um, but. You know, we'll see. I I, I really think uh, Butler has held uh, their pitcher close to their vest most of the season. Yeah. We didn't see her when we faced them. And I think, Coach, a lot of that was by design. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, Mercy Jaguars uh, play tomorrow as well. They play the Holy Cross Cougars. Coach, you beat them back in May 9th, 16 to nothing in a five inning game. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't mean anything now. No. You know, it's, it's, uh, the tournament is here. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah. And let me tell you something Chris Drunken Miller, the Cougars, they lost a tough one to Faraday on the seventh. Mm hmm. And, hey, I'm telling you, I guarantee it he's chomping at the bit to get back out there. Absolutely. Yeah. If um, he's not, then, you know, what? why do we do this? Exactly. Right? Um, and then, finally, the thorn in your side. Yes. The North Bullet Fighting Eagles. Eagles. 12 and 12. Their record does not reflect who they are. They knocked off Mercy earlier in the year. They play – they were supposed to play Western. Western forfeited, which is another major problem that I have with a lot of this stuff. This is two years in a row that they've my, forfeited. Here's my problem. Let a team like Fern Creek in. Or don't let them – or do something else. I don't know. But here's my thing is, is how can they continue to, to get in, right? Because there's only two teams in that district, right? Yeah. Is that the, the ticket? What What uh, is – I think there's three. So – you got them, and I think Doss is in there. And, okay. But, you know, I mean, look at it, dude. they have I think they've only played nine games all year. Right. At the end of the day, dude, they're not even playing a, a full schedule. Correct. You know, and then when it comes to tournament play, they forfeit. Every time. Every time. They forfeited against Mercy last year in 2023. Yes. Now they forfeited again this year. They drew uh, North Bullet. They forfeited, I assume, before the draw was even done. Cause it was oh, 100%. Immediate. I mean, it was, it was already immediate. a given. Yeah. They were forfeited. So what is, Coach, what is the, what is the, what can we do differently here? Do I, you know? I have no idea. No. It's, uh, I don't know. I just, I'm glad that Mercy has a first-round game. Uh, I'd hate to have to sit. Well, like day. last year. Yeah. I mean, that was tough setting while everybody else was playing. Correct. And then we had to get primed up to go down there and play on a Tuesday night at Omer. Correct. And we hadn't seen any pitching. Correct. We're just sitting around. So, yeah, I'd much rather be playing. Yes. Um, I'll just go through the top of the bracket. I definitely think you're going to see a butler Bullet East game, and I think it's going to be a great, great game. I think Bullet East puts it to them, gets out of there. But let me tell you something. Don't be surprised with Butler. No. They've got a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. And I think, honestly, let's see what happens. Yeah, they got a lot of young kids over there that have stepped up and started performing really well. Yeah. They're going to they're going, – look, they knocked Bullet East off last year. Correct. So they're coming back again this year. That Absolutely. is going to be a dogfight right there. And and let me tell you something else. Bullet East didn't forget that. No. They, they've got a chip on those their shoulder as well. Yep. Uh, and and we'll see what happens. Um, Coach, let's just real quickly, do we want to get into who the 6th and 7th regions could play in the tournament, or do we want to save it for next week? So, oh, the state tournament? Yeah. Yeah, let's save it for next week. Um, I do want to say this. Uh, Mercy, I, I probably, I'm going to restate it. Mercy defeated Bullies in a two-overnight game. Um you had two outs to come back the next day and get. Coach, why would they not just call the game, right? What's so the, it, what's so the story it's a district tournament, and you have to have a full seven-inning complete game. Okay. Okay. Um, now, from what I understand, Bullet East could have said, you know what, you got me. We're done. We're not coming back. But, listen, at the end of the day, I'm that coach also that I still have two outs. Yes. I give me my chance. And I and I hope that you would have played it the same way that they did. One hundred percent. Let's come back. And to their credit, their entire team was there and they were warming up. They were hitting balls and they, they were ready. Yes. They were ready to play yep. and do what they had to do to get it done. Absolutely. And um, hey, and shout out to Kyle. At J Town. Oh, absolutely. that poor guy got there early in the morning and worked all day long yes. getting water off that field yes. for us to even play there. Yeah, he did a he did a great job. Um, honestly, I wasn't very excited about going to J Town for the tournament. Um, but considering 
the field itself, okay, not was great. Oh, Kyle th- did a I great job. Kyle did over a there wonderful the job. Yeah. No bathrooms. I mean, how can a district tournament, a re- how could you have that? How could you host? Well, not only that, but, you know, his lights don't work either. Ex- hey, and that's a very and good point. And we started a game at 6 o'clock. And it, right? got, and it got dark. And it did get dark. It got dark, and he does not have – there's just so many questions that I have, right? But here's a problem that I have with this, uh-huh. is they're in the process right now of putting a new turf football field over there, and they went over there and changed the lights out on that stadium and took those old lights down and threw them in the dumpster. Coach Why is, were they not moved to the softball field and giving him lights? Coach is talking about at J-Town High School, the football field is getting a, a, a how many million dollar renovation. Yes. They have uh, perfectly working in good order field lights. And they just took them down. They, they upgraded them, them to new lights. And so when they did that, they threw the old ones away. And why, while they had the boom trucks there and the lifts and everything else, did they not come over and either put them up next to or next, whatever? Swap the old ones out and put the new ones on the poles that he's got. It's a simple Something. task. It's a simple task that could go a long way for a lot of kids out there and a lot of players. Absolutely. Um, I, I didn't, yeah, I don't understand that. That's a weird situation. Um, but, you know, I think the thing that gets me the most is, When you're getting ready to start district play or even regional play, okay, first round of regionals, whoever's hosting, they simply send out rules. Yes. That says you have to have bathrooms. Yes. You have to have lights. Your bases have to be in line. Yes. Everything has to be right. Blah, blah, blah. All this, all these rules about how your field's supposed to be, but yet we have fields out there with no bathrooms Mm -hmm. and not working lights. Another question is, Kyle still has the sl- kickaway bases there at J-Town. Yep. The bases that you slide into and then they give away. Yep. Talk about a nightmare. They- I mean, our kids were constantly – I mean, that's a thing that – that was a fad that came in, yep. right? Yep. Now it's gone yep. 20 years ago. Yep. And it's a, it's a hazard. I yep. mean, it's a hazard. My daughter was standing on second base and was – got it set back. And then continued to like stomp up and down on it, trying to get it set, did not hold up the game. It was just it. it uh, this day and age, JCPS do better. Yeah, do better. Yeah. Um. But shout out to Kyle for getting it, getting it right, getting the field ready for us. Yeah. And he did. He had it ready. We started early, got it done, and uh, the Jaguars won the district for the thirty first time. Thirty first time. So thirty one years, three. Repeat back to back to back. Yep. Um, and and that's never a something to laugh at, especially when you have uh, Bull of East and Fern Creek in your district. No, well, I mean our district is not a a yeah. one that you just get. You know, like some people. Come on, man. You might as well give some people their district tournament every year. Correct. Because there's nobody in there that can even compete with them. Correct. But we have Fern Creek. We have Bull of East. Who every year. Our district is a battle. Absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's a tough district. Um, so make sure if you don't have the Rye Herds app, uh, get out there. It's ryeherds.com, R-I-H-E-R-D-S.com. Follow Mercy Softball on all the things for updates and stuff. Uh, Jaguars play Monday night. The podcast hopefully will be out before then or Monday at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Um, Field is tarped. You had the girls come out Saturday. You yep. hit indoors. Uh, you went over there. You tarped the field. Um, Coach, I think, you know, jumping back to the Jaguars, you've really come. This team has evolved Yeah. from a little bit of a mess or a mix-up mm-hmm. or what's going on to they're kind of coming together at the right time. Well, I mean, you know, and again, our, our record – you know, doesn't reflect where where we're at either. Every you're, you're pe- eighteen and thirteen, uh, but let's just say at one point you were ten and ten, eleven and yeah. twelve. I mean, you had a losing record yeah. for a while. Um, but it comes with the territory, coach. You scheduled up this year. I did, and I you did. had some very tough opponents. That honestly, I would love to see us get another crack at. Yeah, 
I Absolutely. Mean, because, I was, look, yeah. when I faced a lot of those opponents, yeah. I had a freshman on the mound. Yes. Like, both of my, my senior and junior pitchers were out hurt. Yes. So, we got Maya back, and guess what? Yes. Two days ago, I got Olivia Colbank back. Yes. So, my lefty's back also. If we keep hitting the ball the way we're hitting it, and I've got those two on the yes. mound, things yeah. are changing. Yeah. Things are changing. Um, the regional tournament for the sixth and seventh regions is down at University of Louisville softball field. They do a, a tremendous job. I, I do hand it to the KHSAA yeah. for, for getting this partnership together, right, uh, for making it happen. Uh, because it is what a great experience for these kids to get to run out on that field. It's an awesome, you know, set up. People are in the outfield. They're oh, in the stands. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of everywhere. And then, and then Friday night, the big dog, you know, the championship back to back games at six o'clock and eight o'clock. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's a great time. It's fun. You know, and, and the other thing is, is it's overwhelming if you've never been there. Correct. Okay. So, the good thing is, is my team has been there with the exception of my young freshmen. Mm -hmm. But that's why I played the schedule I played mm -hmm. to put them in the big games yes. so that when they do walk on that field at Ulmer, mm -hmm. provided we make it there on Tuesday, that they don't get overwhelmed yes. and get so nervous that they can't perform. Yes. Uh, so I put them in situations this year um, in tough games to make sure that that they they can overcome that when they look out there and they see all these people lined up behind them and all those people in that stands yeah that they don't just completely get overwhelmed yeah because it absolutely can happen and and some of the tough losses you had and the big wins you had give them that ability to look past that focus on the game and and do their job absolutely yeah um, best of luck to all the teams out there. Best of luck to Allison Harris down at Marshall County. Coach, um, real quick, um, they're in a very tough region. Yes. Um, and Allison, stay hot. Do your thing down there. And uh, you keep know, keep hitting those fly balls. Yeah, keep hitting them dingers. Uh, the Mizuno back coach, real quick update. Absolute uh, game changer, I think. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, kids like it. Uh, ball seems to come off there really well. The bat's uh, performing the way we want it to. Uh, both of them, actually. Uh, the power, uh, the power um, carbon mm -hmm. and the carbon one, um, kids like it. Yeah, it's a difference between a one-piece and a two-piece. And, yeah. and coaches went through it. He, he likes the one-piece more. I do. My daughter likes the two-piece. It's kind of a preference thing. And if you're on the fence, come by Top Prospects. Call Coach JB. And uh, get hitting lessons. He's got the bats here. You can demo them and see what you think. We but. even we even bought the um, – so you got the power carbon, you got the carbon one, and then we turned around and bought the carbon two. Oh, So okay. the new one. Um, and Haley Roop actually hit with that today, and she liked it. Awesome. Uh, so I think she's going to be breaking that out tomorrow. So sorry we've been uh, MIA for a while. It's uh, It was Dan the fan's fault, and I, I kind of – um, we needed some good juju. We got the juju, and and so now uh, we can come back in and, and do this. And uh, the girls are in the right spot. So, coach, best of luck to you in yeah. the tournament. Best of luck to all the coaches out there. Um, any final words? No, listen. Hey, I just want to just congratulate everybody for getting to this point. Yes. Okay. High school softball is a long season. Mm -hmm. Thirty six games. Um, you know, you got your ups, you got your downs, you got different personalities. And look, coaching today is difficult. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I just read a post from a coach that coaches, I believe in, uh, North Carolina, I think. And she put a big post out that she's stepping down, uh, and talking about how tough it is to coach today, you know, and, you know, it is tough. Right. But you got to be able to handle all these different, you know, these the, the way that the kids gel together. You got to yes. be able to put all that together. Team bonding is important. Yes. You know, and getting through that. But I just want to tell everybody good luck. And, you know, kids, 
Go out there and ball out. Yeah. You got nothing to lose at this point. It's win or go home. Absolutely. Ball out and give everything you got. And I tell my kids all the time, if you give me everything you got and I got to carry you off the field at the end, I'll be the first one out there to throw you over my shoulder and pack you off that field. Hey, no better word spoken. Um, follow us on all of our social media. Um, we will update you on next week once we get through the uh, regional tournament and we'll kind of do a wrap up from there and and what how i fared with my picks and uh you know don't take it the wrong way if i didn't pick your team it's uh it's for fun it's just we're seeing seeing where i land um but uh coach once again good luck we will see you next week on softball talk absolutely